Oh, look at this. There's a black cat crossing our path. That's right. Uh -huh. And I hear some uh, planets are about ready to cross into Scorpio. I wore this in honor of all of the planets in Scorpio. This week we start out with the new moon in Scorpio, so the sun's in Scorpio, the moon's in Scorpio, and joining them, Mercury is in Scorpio. And that's a lot of planets in Scorpio. Ooh. So depending on where Scorpio is in your chart, will tell you how you're going to deal with that energy. So for Scorpios, it's all about them. It's all about them being very, very effective communicators. The spotlight is on them for one reason or another, and it's a very, very strong week for them. So it, and it's the type of thing where they are going to get their wants and needs met regardless of anybody else. It's all about the Scorpio. For Sagittarians, not so much. Sagittarians really need to just take a deep breath take a step back and regroup. There's a lot of stuff going on, and, and it's kind of behind-the-scenes stuff. Sagittarius not really sure what to make of it, and, and since you don't really know what to make of it, don't do anything with it. The best I, I'm not a big fan of procrastinating, because Sagittarians do that a lot, but in this time, um, it's really a good idea to wait and see what shakes out before you decide what you're going to do. Okay. For Capricorns, this is a great week for them, because they get to reach for the brass ring. They're coming around on the merry-go-round, and the brass ring is actually within reach, and it's going to take the help of their well-placed, powerful female friends and colleagues to make it happen for them, which is great for Capricorns. For Aquarians, 10th house of career and public standings, and Aquarians have to be very careful not to, not to irritate the bosses, not to, to go against what the powers that be are saying, and whether or not, and Aquarians have very strong opinions because they're a fixed air sign, this is not the time to be voicing them. This is the time to say whatever the boss says, okay, yes, and, and wait and see, and, and, don't, and don't go to any fights unless you're expressly invited to them. Okay. <laughs> don't go fighting for someone else. For Pisces, it's in their ninth house of the law. Legal matters, educational matters, important matters at a distance all go very, very favorably for Pisces. But Pisces cannot leave this to someone else to handle. They need to do an in-person thing to get the very best result. And if you're going to beg for mercy, do it on one knee, do it in person. For Aries, it's in the eighth house of other people's money, other people's resources. Aries are trying very, very hard to, to get their financial affairs in order. They've had a rough two and a half years. Um, and, and now they're trying to get their ducks in a row. And what they need to realize is rather than looking for new resources, they need to capitalize on existing ones to find a way to maximize their existing resources. They'll get a better result. For Tauruses, um, the hard work of the last month is over for them. Um, and they are in the spotlight for one reason or another. The drawback to that is Taurus is going to hear everybody calling their name, everybody making demands on them. And they, they have to really kind of prioritize what's important and what can kind of go by the wayside. Otherwise, they'll be completely overwhelmed because everybody's going to ask them for their help. Poor Pat. Yeah, well, no, I, I know, every time I think about Doris, I think poor Pat. More, more work for her. Um, for Geminis, it's in their sixth house of work and responsibility and health. There is some kind of health matter that a Gemini has been putting off and procrastinating about because they just don't have time to deal with it, but they're going to need to deal with it over the next month or so, over the next 30 days or so. And for Geminis, i got to tell you, hard work will pay off. And that's, that's really, at the end of the day, really what matters for Geminis, that just to keep plugging along. So, gotcha. Yes, for Cancers, it's in their fifth house of love affairs, children, sports, amusements, pleasures, a wonderfully fun time for Cancers. It's a very creative time, and they have to be careful because it's a very fertile time for them as well. So, in every sense of the word, either in the physical sense of the word or in the esoteric sense where you give birth to an idea that then takes on a life of its own. So, you have to be careful what you wish for because you're likely to get it. Cancers oh. for Leos. Fourth House are home and foundations. They have really been mulling over a decision. They have, they don't have enough information yet to make the right decision, and they're not quite sure how to think about it. They know they're irritated. They're not quite sure what to do with that irritation. So rather than lash out, the best thing is to kind of keep quiet and see where the lay of the land is, and and bide your time because living well is the best revenge for for um for Leo. Okay. For Virgo, it's in their third house of day to day living. They need to research something before they act. Um, they need to really do some due diligence to see exactly what it is they're getting into, exactly what it is that's going on, rather than just kind of scattershotting it. Um, and, and they need to do the research themselves. They cannot rely on anybody else to do it for them. And then for Libra, the last song we're going to talk about, it's about the money. It's about finding a way to make more money, either through, through the fruits of your own labor or through teaming up with somebody. But quite clearly, Libra needs more money, and they're going to have to take some kind of action to do that. So that's tomorrow's news today for the 12 signs of the Zodiac with um, all of the planets being in the sign of Scorpio. Sounds like good news for Scorpies. For Scorpios and a couple of others. We'll see you next week. Always a pleasure.